at this garden. It's busting. I don't think I've ever seen so many weeds in a garden. It looks awful. Our sunflowers sure are pretty, aren't they? The birds scare you? See if we have any um, squash over there. There's one. And this is very dead. There's nothing on it. <clears throat> it has vine borers. I love those. I'm gonna eat that for breakfast. Look at all those habaneros. There is just so much to pick. Look at that red pepper up there. Get ready too. Mm-hmm. We planted a sunflower in the chicken coop and it is ready to harvest. We are going to go harvest it. Well, we didn't really plant it. Oh, I thought we planted it. No. Okay. It actually okay. just found a way. So here's our sunflower. It actually sprouted because their seed has sunflower seeds in it and this one I guess got down in between the coop it's in between the coop and a four by four we'll see yeah it's a little bit messy in the back but not too bad what are you gonna do with that I don't know probably get some seeds from it you want to sit it on the ground here and let them peck at it We'll put it face up, buddy. Flip it over. There you go. Boy, uh, look at a sunflower. Think they'll peck at it? Uh, I bet Piggy will eat it. Can she know. eat a sunflower head? I mean, I've not seen a whole lot she won't eat, but I don't think she needs to eat that. Fuck, well, she's already eaten like eight or nine tomatoes today. She's a fatty fat. I don't think they're going to eat it. We'll take it in and let it dry. Alright, there you go. Harvested your sunflower head. Let's look at some of these chickens. He's so pretty. Thank you, Tammy. We love him. He's awesome. If you're curious why our chickens look awful, it's because they're molting. They're not raggedy. I want to show you this chicken in the back. It's our favorite. One of our favorites that hatched out. Ooh, this is soft. Yeah, I know. That's where they've been scratching. This, she'll probably run. My little tan head baby. This little, she's mixed with a cinnamon queen. It's this hen right there. The silver one. She's silver and yep. black in the back. And she was my favorite. And she's red. And she did not at die. At the top. And she did not die when we got attacked by raccoons. She's so beautiful. 
That little black one's beautiful too, that uh, ostrilop. And then we have this ostrilop. She just has these little streaks of uh, red and green. She's gorgeous too. They are mixed with that Rhode Island red rooster. Mr. C has, like, Mr. C doesn't breed with any of the hounds. Poor Mr. C. He's tiny, that's why. That is a beautiful bird. These are the chicks that hatched out earlier in the season that you saw us raising in the garage. That little tiny red one is also one of them. One of them. That is a Rhode Island red chick. She was a runt. Yes, yes she was. I don't know how she's still alive, honestly. She is teeny tiny. They all stay together. Our pretty little babies. give you an update on our watermelon. It's almost as big as my head. It's getting big. Our other watermelon. Wah, wah. Hey, I, I don't even know where it is. It rotted. Oh, head okay. blossom end rot. It's dead. Yeah. So let's hope for that one. It looks little. It's not. It really, it's not. Want me to go in there and put my hand next to it? No. I don't want you to open that fence. Because of the boss. Hey. Yeah. I'm excited about all the carrots. This is awesome. All right. This is what we were blessed enough to pull out of the garden today. When I look at this, I cannot believe that we produce this much food. <laughs> look at all those habaneros. <laughs> I know. I laugh every time I see those habaneros because I don't know how many times I've told you all this, but we don't eat habaneros. We just grow them. The carrots were an experiment that I planted seeds in between the tomato plants. We were not sure if they were even going to produce carrots. Looks like they did. You got a sneeze? <laughs> Sounds like you had a sneeze. Some of these um, peppers we picked before they were quite ready because they were touching the ground. We have rain coming and more rain coming. And we have a Peter Rabbit that lives in our garden and he is eating anything he can reach. So between the mold and the Peter Rabbit, we have to harvest our peppers before they're quite ready and we gotta let those finish in the house. So same thing with some of these tomatoes. Yep. They're going to split. But anyway, um, when we moved here, we did not think we could grow food. Everybody that lived in this area said, oh, you'll never be able to produce food here. It's a high water table. We would come out to the yard and there would be crawfish hoes in the grass with big crawfish mounds. And we still find them, don't get me wrong. They crawl across our driveway. We have toads everywhere. There's toads, big giant toads. We live in a floodplain. All of this area floods. Um, all of that up there floods from that pole all along down through there floods all that area that's overgrown down through there it floods regularly this area down through here all the way down past that fencing and behind those boxes it holds water standing water these raised beds are because that area holds water if you stick the shovel in the ground it will fill with water People said, oh, you can't grow food here. There's just no way. And this is our third summer here. And we have worked very hard. And we have worked with our neighbors and they've brought us manure and we've hauled in wood chips and straw and hay and all of the stuff. Our chickens have worked our ground and We've worked very hard to be able to be fruitful. And I think we got that. We are so grateful to be blessed to be able to produce not one garden, but two gardens of food here. What a great year we've had. And we are not naive and ungrateful.